Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I think odd is uh, a correct description of the wines that I've got in front of me. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure they, I will have offended the winemakers of all five of these. But uh, they really don't fit into too many categories, uh, conventional categories. But they could be interesting. I've organised them in alcohol order, uh, which may or may not make sense, but we'll only find that out by the end of the tasting. Because uh, some of them I'm familiar with and some of them I am not. Um, so uh, we've got two Hungarians, we've got a Romanian and we've got two English wines in, in there as well. So the first uh, one, we are in Hungary, Hilltop. And uh, this is, um, they used to say, the, 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 there was a wine that was sold and it was called the Unpronounceable Grape. Well, it is pronounceable because it's uh, Cheshigi Fuzerez. Um, you need to take your teeth out to, uh, to say it properly, uh, but uh, let, let's, let's give it a whirl and see how we get on. So this is, weighs in at 11% alcohol. I always think of this as uh, Gewurztraminer Tremina in training. Uh, so let's see whether that, that um, pans out here. Uh, well, ish with the Gewurztraminer thing. Uh, some Gewurztraminers are big and oily. This smells like it's got some of those um, uh, exotic, some of the lychee, some of the ginger edges, but it's, it feels like it's going to be on the drier, um, more northern Italian style of Gewurztraminer rather than the uh, Alsace style. Also, there's something uh, like hops in there, um, which uh, smells smells really nice. Um, and it's in terms of hops, if you want to go into your hops, uh, well, maybe it's a bit of the... Uh, it's more the lager hops, it's more the sars than the fuggles and uh, goldings. Perfectly decent, um, and uh, it, yeah, it is dry. It's got this um, uh, spicy bite. People, uh, spicy is, is maybe the wrong word, but it's got this um, uh, aromatic, fruity bite. Uh, that edge of lychee and ginger, and uh, yeah, this really wafting in uh, that ever so slightly oily aromas, but. Um, but not oily texture. I, I sometimes I, 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 I use that with brown sugar. I think brown sugar flavours, but not brown sugar sweetness. Here it's got the that, that aromatic oily hop edge, uh, but not the, uh, the that oily richness in the mouth. Does that make sense? It does to me. Um, good wine. Uh, not everyone will like it, and I think that the people who like it will uh, drink quite a lot of it. But they're probably only about a quarter of the population. I don't know, I may be completely wrong, but it um, be interesting to see reactions to that. OK, uh, next two are both from the Chapel Down Winery in Tenterden in Kent. Uh, first one is Flint Dry, which is a blend of uh, varieties. It doesn't say a blend of premium varieties. It says a blend of varietals. Uh, someone will get told off for that uh, because there are there are some uh, uh, wine uh, term people who think oh no varietal means it's 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 just one thing it shouldn't you can't have a blend of varietals and uh, oh well, I'll be quiet and, t and sniff the wine light dainty and fresh a uh, little edge of alka seltzer in there um, and uh, fruit it's on that uh, apple and citrus yeah the gr quite green apple but ripe green apple and the citrus um, it's almost more veer veering more, more towards the orange than the the lemon and lime um, it smells like it's going to be quite uh, fresh and bracing but um, knowing the, the way these people make wines it's not going to be one of those that has your buttocks clenching and then when you come to taste it, the elderflower kicks in. Uh, you get these floral, um, yeah, really nice, uh, juicy aromas. Um, f for me, the um, the Hungarian one was maybe just a bit OTT. This is more um, friendly aromatic. It's uh, it's gentle. Uh, this this one is uh, one for for people who like their music turned up to never mind eleven, turned up to thirteen. This one is more drinkable, uh, more more charm really for me. And uh, there's a touch of sweetness on the finish, but it's very subtle. It's one of those where it, it will qualify as a dry wine, but they've used that little bit of sugar quite cleverly. And uh, I like it. I like it. Nice bit of melon on the finish, too. Let's see what their Bacchus is like. Bacchus is a grape that, this, again, same vintage, 2010. Uh, Bacchus is um, a grape that, uh, get it right, and it... Uh, it's, it's like Sauvignon Blanc, get it wrong, and um, it's like bad Sauvignon Blanc. Let's see what this camp this falls into. Um, I'd still say stick with the Sauvignon Blanc analogy, but uh, whereas some of them uh, remind me of uh, uh, that more um, voluptuous New Zealand style of Sauvignon Blanc, this for me is more in the, almost like a Sancerre type of mould. Uh, so there's a flintiness, I mean the, the one before was called Flint Dry, I get more of a flinty character coming through here. 
Um, maybe not quite as much of an elderflower kick. I, again, I think uh, some of the uh, characteristics that I'm getting uh, on the flint dry, uh, I expect to get on the backers. So I'm getting a touch of the elderflower, but it's more on this flinty, stony character. And um, maybe they've just got the labels mixed up, but um, it smells like it's going to be good, fresh, and again, um, bracing, but not too bracing. Got this cattiness that I think of as being Sancerre. Cat, nettle, um, gooseberry a bit, and... Um, and the flintiness. Um, if I have a problem with it, maybe there's just a little touch of sweetness uh, and I'm not sure whether they needed that. The, the, the one before seemed to finish slightly drier. Um, maybe if they'd left that without that, that uh, sweetness, it would have been a bit too much of a, uh, of a butter clenching experience. But here, I feels like the fruit flavours are rich enough anyway. So I'm slightly disappointed that they, uh, uh, they, they felt the need to in, in whatever way they've done it, to round it out. It, it felt like there was a tighter, purer wine to be made there. Hey, but um, strangely, I prefer the flint dry. Yeah, flint dry is the one for me. Um, now, I said we were going to have uh, two Hungarian wines, and I was completely wrong. I've just uh, realised that while this is Ferment, uh, one of the, uh, the great grapes of Tokaj, uh, Hungary's uh, great wine, uh, we are actually in Slovenia. Uh, so this is the uh, Shipon uh, Ferment from uh, Dveri Pax, and on the back it says Staszeska Slovenia. And I'd love to tell you what, I knew exactly what that means, but I would be lying to you. Um, let's just give it a whirl. So in terms of alcohol, what we've done, we started at 11% with the Hilltop, uh, then we crept up to 11.5% with the Flint Dry. Uh, this and the Bacchus are both, uh, uh, are both 12%. Now Ferment's one of those grapes that doesn't major on fruit flavour. Um, one, one of its main roles in, in Tokai uh, is to provide the body and to provide uh, susceptibility to botrytis. Um, and then you get other grapes adding in the um, uh, little bits, of, little nuances of, uh, of freshness and, uh, and, and a bit more fruit. Here, um, w what I do get is um, that, that it feels like it's going to be a wine that's, that creeps up on you. Uh, the, 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 these really subtle herbal aromas here. Fruit flavours, quite backward, uh, but yes, gentle, um, bit of hawthorn character coming through. And um, yeah, yeah, a bit of, bit of herbs as well. I mean, it's maybe a little touch of thyme here. And then when you come to taste it, it's the herbs, it's the mineral character, that's a very strong sense of soil here. There's, uh, I don't know whether there's any volcanic uh, uh, activity going on here, but there is a, yeah, there's this like a ever so slight, um, yeah, volcanic character. Can't describe it any other way. Uh, and then the fruit flavours kick in and um, it, it is, it does have something similar to Sauvignon in here. And uh, so um, it, it, what I mean by that, there's a slight catty citrus, um, not quite as um, out and out catty as, it, as, the, uh, as the Bacchus had been, um, more subtle. And those herbs and those more mineral um, terroir characters um, really uh, are, are the ones that are more to the fore than the fruit. Uh, really tasty wine, classy, and one of those that, that's a real creeper. Uh, so you, you, first of all, you think, is there, is there enough wine here? But the more, the more it lingers in your mouth, the more it grows on you. And um, favourite so far. Let's see how we get on with the final one. And we are in Romania here. Uh, Prince Sturby, uh, Tamawasha, um, great variety, Tamawasha Romanesca. Sec 2010, but this weighs in at 13% uh, um, alcohol. And uh, it, it, fascinating this, uh, we started off with a uh, fragrant, oily, spicy one, and we're finishing on, on, on something that's a bit like that. I've had sweet versions of, uh, of, of the, this great variety, and uh, uh, they, they work brilliantly. Here, uh, it feels like Gewürztraminer, but just, just brought back a little bit. So it has got those rich, oily, juicy flavours. I don't think it's going to be a sweet wine. Well, it's the word sec on there should uh, lead me to believe it's not going to be a sweet wine. But I think it's going to have quite a bit of richness and presence. And that's got a rich, um, tense minerality to it. Um, almost a bit too tense and rich for its own good in the state it is at the moment. Personally, and again, I'm not a winemaker, um, but if, I, if, I, if I'm doing that style, uh, the... Um, 
the way in which the minerality comes through um, is it, 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 it gives a stern, a really stern spine to the wine. Um, so you've got these quite rounded, uh, ever so slight lime jelly, a uh, bit of orange, crystallised orange flavour uh, going on in there. And, and so these touches of lychee and maybe a, a touch of the, uh, the, the ginger as well. But uh, the spine is almost just a little bit too upright, and uh, I want, I almost wish they'd done it not quite as a sec, but as a, oh, just about, with just a little bit more sweetness, just to round it out. I'm not trying to make a bimbo wine or anything like that, but um, that out and out um, uh, mineral backbone. I find works not quite with it in the way that I would like to. So maybe if they'd done it at 12.5% alcohol and left the other bit as unfermented sugar, for me it would have been a slightly better balanced wine. Um, I like the flavours, and um, but as with the first one, it, re it really is, they, they, there will be some people who love it, but uh, quite a lot of people will, won't be so sure. If you're into that drier edge of Gewurztraminer, then by all means go for it. Um, and uh, I, I, I love dry Gewurztraminer, but it needs to be, uh, the, the whole wine needs to be in balance. Here, um, I, yeah, I, I just wish they'd really done a little bit of Mary Poppins with it. But it's been a fascinating set of five wines. Um, the Slovenian one, uh, my pick, then the Flint Dry, and uh, uh, but uh, wines to keep you uh, energised, wine to wines to keep you on your toes. Uh, we get dreadfully bored with a constant diet of Sauvignon or Chardonnay or Pinot Grigio, and uh, these bring you back to. Um, not reality, but uh, normality, uh, but um, vitality, uh, winality, let's just call it that. And that's the finality. I'm going to shut up now. See you soon.